I'm Lily Mae and I'm here with Laz Alonzo, star of Jumping the Broom. So tell us a little bit about your character. Um, my character is Jason Taylor. Mm -hmm. He and Paula Patton's character, Sabrina Watson, we meet each other and instantly fall in love. Now Sabrina, uh, she's been looking for love in all the wrong places and doing all the wrong things to find love. And then she made a promise to God. She said, you know what, I'm not going to have sex until I get married. Dear Lord, please send me the right person. Okay. And Jason Taylor was the brother that was willing and ready mm -hmm. to wait and not push the thing and not push the envelope. And he was like, you know what, she is the woman of my dreams. I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. Six months later, cut to the wedding. Oh, okay, and that's when? And that's when everything, everything <laughs> almost falls apart and breaks mm -hmm. loose, you know, because the thing is, is you can love somebody, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that their families are going to love each other. Right, definitely, definitely. And here we got two completely different families from two totally different worlds. And while we're all black, it doesn't mean that we're all the same. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we explore that in a very, very funny way in this film. So tell us about the all-star cast. I mean, we have Paula Patton, Angela Bassett. What is it like working with, you know, actors and actresses of all calibers in this film? What was that like for you? It, it, was, it, it was easy. Mm -hmm. It was easy. It's almost like, you know, when you watch the all-star game mm -hmm. and you watch the best of every single team come together, they make it look almost, you know, Effortless. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. You know, Paula Patton, Angela Bassett, Loretta Devine, D. Ray Davis, Mike Epps, Megan Good. Yeah. You know, uh, Pooch Hall, Romeo Miller, right, right. Tasha Smith. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian Michael Stokes, Valerie Pettiford. You know, Broadway actors. I mean, you had a little bit of everything in this film. We can't forget Loretta Devine. Of you know, who plays my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and it's just, it was just something where you felt the magic on set. Now you're gonna be I can imagine. I mean, yeah. especially with Mike Epps and, oh, and I'm Andy Gray, you. like that's too. Mike <laughs> Epps and Ray right? They they killed it. Mm -hmm. They they were on a mission to bring the light skinned brother oh, back. Oh god. <laughs> and I feel like they've accomplished it. One thing you're gonna see out of Mike Epps and D Ray's performance yeah. is acting chops. Mm -hmm. Like we've never seen them in a dramatic actor role. Right. And these two brothers brought it. Really? Oh, they absolutely brought it. That's D Ray brought the the bad guy antagonist thing mm -hmm. to the table, and he was still funny. Right. But he really, he really did his thing, and so did Mike Epps. And, and in my opinion, I feel like Salim Akil, who's the director of the game, mm -hmm. you know, the director and creator of Girlfriends, along with his wife Mara Brock Akil, you know, he gave them that shot. Mm -hmm. He gave them an opportunity to really act, not just play right. what we're used to seeing them play. Okay, these guys are gonna come in and make us laugh. No, he gave them an opportunity to really show their chops, and they did it. And after I saw the film, I just saw the film for the first time last night. That's why I'm so excited right oh, now. Wow. Oh, wow. At man. the Bronner Brothers screening. At the Bronner screen. Brothers screening. We did a midnight wow. screening at Atlantic Center, and the crowd was laughing from the minute we sat down to the minute we got up. They were in stitches. Mm -hmm. I mean, they loved the film, and the parts where they were emotional, they were feeling it, they were yelling at, at <laughs> oh, the screen. I mean, they were in it, you right, know, right. and when you feel that audience, you know, have that emotion, that's when you know we're doing something good. Right, and how did you get involved with this film particularly? How did that come to play? Well, Twinkie Bird, uh, the cast and director of the film, she had also casted me in Stop the Yard. Okay. Um, she brought me in for an audition. You know, the thing about Hollywood is, is that even though people know that you have done good work, mm -hmm. They have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. So just because I had just come off of Avatar, biggest movie of all time, that didn't mean nothing. I still had to go in and audition, mm -hmm. audition against all my other peers in Hollywood, and basically convince them that I can play a good guy. Wow. You know, win the role. Mm -hmm. And I have no problems with winning the role. When I read something and I'm passionate about it, I'll go in and I'll fight for it. Yeah. And that's what I did for this film. And you know, they told me that when I walked out of that room, I walked out with the part wow. because they saw it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful and blessed that they believed in me. Absolutely, and you mentioned Avatar. What was that like? Because that was such a huge film and it's animation. How was that for you? Avatar was great, you know I mean? Somebody like working with a James Cameron, mm -hmm. just the fact that I had an opportunity to audition for him, for me, was a dream come true. Right. Because I was such a big fan of his work. And uh, to be on set every day working with him, and he's no joke. I mean, he's gonna push you to the limits. Mm -hmm. um, but he's fair also, and he won't make you do something on set that he himself isn't gonna try out first, a man in his 50s. Wow. And if he can do it and it's safe, he's like, okay, y'all can do it. Right, right. I mean, I saw this guy swinging from ropes, jumping off of you know 12 foot you know, wooden cliffs that they oh. built for us, wow. and he would do it first and make sure that we were safe. Mm -hmm. And once he would do it, he'd be like, all right, 
you guys are gonna be jumping off a cliff for the next twelve hours. <laughs> Excited. But it was cool, right, you know, because right. he showed you he's he's committed. Mm -hmm. So. And having a history of investment banking, am I right? Yes. How was that transition from investment banking to acting? Well, you know, this is still the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. You know, we would like to think that it's all about the art, right. but it isn't all about the art. Art is part of it, but it also has to make a profit mm -hmm. in order for the art to live, the art to continue. Right. You know, so one thing that I've been doing a lot of is educating our people. You know, so a lot of times our people don't know how to keep the art alive. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, my mom is, is an example of that. I was away in Russia shooting a movie, and I had just done this film called Jarhead, and my mom was so happy and so proud to let me know that she was in her living room watching Jarhead. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mom, the movie is still in theaters. Oh, How are you in your living room watching Jarhead? She, oh, I picked it up at the beauty salon. Oh, no. So my mom had bought a bootleg copy of oh, Jarhead right. and thought she was helping the cause, and she wasn't. Right. She was killing our business. Right. So nine, nine out of ten times when people download movies for free mm -hmm. or, or buy a bootleg at, at the, at outside on the sidewalk or something, they don't realize that they are destroying black Hollywood. Right. And it's not that they're hurting my pocket is they're hurting black Hollywood. Because mm -hmm. at one time, we used to have like five, 10 black movies a year. Right. Now we're lucky if we have one or two. Right, right. And that's because our people are going out, buying bootlegs or downloading them. And that means that Hollywood looks at the profit margins of these movies and they say, oh, well, black movies don't make money like they used mm -hmm. to. So let's take this $13 million and just put it into another big action pack movie. Right. You know, so it's, a, it's important, it's very important for black America to go to the theaters. Mm -hmm. That's how you vote, and right. that's how you let Hollywood know we have to keep making black movies mm -hmm. because we are here and we need those movies to tell our stories. You know, so yeah. people have to go out to the movies and support this film. Mm -hmm. You know, when the bootlegger come, comes in the barbershop or in the salon, turn them away. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give a bootlegger five dollars or ten or twenty or hundred dollars to not sell my movie. Throw it away, throw it in, or, or give me all those so I can throw it in the garbage. I don't want you to sell my movie, right. you know? And, and that's the thing is that we have to stop that because ultimately it's hurting, it's hurting us. Right. I, I, and in conclusion, if there's anything else that you want people to know about this film, just let it It was produced by T.D. Jakes, Tracy Edmonds, you know, black people on every side of this film from the production to the director, Salima Keel, producer and creator of the game and, and girlfriends, to all the faces that you see on camera. So this is something that really shows when you have, even, even the, the, the executive of the film, Devon Franklin at Sony Pictures, you know, is an African-American brother. So it's like all the way around, from the top of the, the, the helm all the way down, oh, it, it's a full-blown African-American production, and it just shows how good we can be when we work together. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We're really excited to see the film. Thank you. It's going to be huge. I promise you I put that on everything. This is one of the best movies I've ever worked on, and I'm really proud and happy about it.